So, and we get to the, to the point of basic input output system. So the BIOS term uh, was first introduced in 1975 by Gary Kildall uh, in CP slash M um, OS, which was predecessor of MS-DOS. And this is very interesting because uh, Gary Kildall get um, IEEE, IEEE um, uh, award for, for this invention. And, and I really um, recommend to uh, to read a story about uh, CPM slash CP slash M uh, OS um, and how the BIOS was invented. Um, so the BIOS was a name of the boot firmware implementation on x86 used for uh, for over 30 years. This term is familiar even to some people which are not very technical, so they understand that during the boot process you have this uh, um, blue window. Uh, blue gray window, but right now, of course, uh, the BIOS is more and more sophisticated and it's starting to be graphical user interface. That's why it's often used as a uh, the BIOS term is always uh, often used as a synonym of the boot firmware. Uh, we rather like the boot firmware because it's more clear what what it is really. The BIOS is rather very very x86 uh, and legacy term. Um, so the BIOS was written in pure assembly. It needed very deep knowledge and debugging uh, um, skills uh, to to uh, to develop to maintain. Um, so um, the development of the BIOS was very time consuming, uh, not very portable, um, and the BIOS provided hardware initialization, configuration, utilities, and runtime services which could be used by operating system. I, we will talk about that how the modern UFI uh, replacement of the BIOS providing that. Um, so BIOS was looking for the bootloader in, in the first 512 bytes of the boot media, which could be some floppy disk or, or, or hard, hard disk. Um, and in that way, it, it passed control to some to operating system. So there are BIOSes like uh, Vincent uh, firmware, uh, which uh, use exactly the same methodology of uh, pure assembly implementation. And by the way, Vincent uh, BIOS is very well known from rapid boot, uh, boot process and is extremely fast, and, uh, and, but it's still like an assembly implementation of the, of the BIOS. And uh, back in the days, BIOSes were typically closed source. Uh, there was proprietary license uh, related to it and yeah, and definitely delivered only in, in binary form. So from 1975, we just like, you know, uh, jumping very fast to 1990, where we suddenly got 32-bit uh, processors with uh, protect, protected mode. Um, uh, we have uh, way more memory than um, all BIOS can handle. Um, then those applications which are delivered uh, are, are um, capable of fully accessing the hardware thanks to BIOS services. We facing um, uh, upcoming Windows 95 and, and really complexity explodes because of the more hardware, more needs, more sophisticated software running. In the mid 1990s, uh, uh, first time uh, ext extensible firmware interface concept appears because Intel starts working on EFI uh, to replace BIOS because they have this project with which a, with HP called Itanium, which was 64-bit processor um, for for high-performance computing. Uh, but unfortunately, Itanium uh, eventually fall apart and was not very successful. But from that days, we we got the predecessor of modern UFI, which was called. EFI, Extensible Firmware Interface. So access uh, to EFI specification at that point was, was close to Intel partners. Uh, then in, in uh, 2005, there was EFI 1.1 uh, release. And this was the last uh, EFI specification release because after that, uh, there was uh, UFI forum established, which initially got ARM, AMD, HP, Lenovo, Phoenix, Microsoft, IBM, and, and some, others part, some other partners. And, um, and this uh, UFI forum uh, obtained EFI specification as a 
as a contribution from Intel and then Un Unified Extensible Firmware Interface uh, Forum was born and after that uh, we could wait for uh, versions of the UFI specification.